Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Beyond measure. Hi, I'm Brian Nugent, certified master coach and professional speaker. Success, what is it? Who doesn't want it? One of the things that I've learned about success is this. There's a fine line between those that succeed and there's those that don't. Now, you, growing up, I had an opportunity to play professional football in the Canadian Football League. One of my coaches was Wally Buono. He's actually the winningest coach of all time in CFL history. My second coach in professional sports was Don Matthews, who's the second winningest coach in CFL history. And one of the things that I've learned by being around top performers, people that succeed, people who get to the next level, there's a few things that they have down pat. And when you think about people that we revere, Michael Jordan, Helen Keller, Mahatma Gandhi, one of the things when it comes to separating from why am I succeeding or not is this. What is your purpose? What is our purpose? Why am I here? When you define your purpose and you know exactly what you want, great things can happen. Now you can start an action plan. Number two, how intelligent are you are about the process? You see, let's use weight loss for example. A lot of us might want to lose weight and get in shape, right? Well, first thing you need to do is you need to know you want to lose weight. Number two, how am I going to go about doing it? Am I going to go to the gym? Am I going to get a personal trainer? Am I going to work out on my own? Am I going to get a diet plan? You got to be intelligent about your approach. What about making money? Same approach. How am I going to invest? How am I going to save? Right? What are the things that I'm going to do in order to increase my capital? And then number three, we have to work hard, right? Nobody ever would spoon feed us for success. We have to understand that in order to go to the next level, that we have to be working hard in order to get there. Edwin Moses, one of the great runners of all time in the 200 meter run, never had lost a race in his whole entire career. And you know what they said to him? They said, Edwin, how come you never lost any race? What did you do? And he said, every day I didn't train was one day somebody else was training to beat me. Wow, <laughs> how profound is that? And then the last one to success is perseverance. What is it gonna take? How many of us have fallen on our face? I know I've fallen on my face. I've had 21 dislocated shoulders in playing sports. I've had a blown MCL, ACL. I've had a level three concussion. I've had three major car accidents that almost took my life. I lost my mom at age 16. And the question is this, where my attention goes, my energy flows. I can take these things and say, wow, you know what? I've had a tough life, I can't do it. Or I can say, what is my inner game? How am I gonna make things happen? I think of a story, the story of the carpenter. There was an old man, his, his name was Carpenter Joe. And when Carpenter Joe was getting ready to retire, he, he walked into his boss's office and he says, you know what boss, I'm 65 years old, I'm getting ready to retire. But here's the thing, Carpenter Joe was a really good carpenter, so his boss didn't want to see him go. So his boss said to him, said, Joe, can you build me one more house if you don't mind? Let me ask you a question. Has anyone ever asked you to do something, but you really didn't want to do it, but you did it anyways, but you really didn't want to do it? I know I've been there. So Carpenter Joe goes and builds his house, but when he builds his house, he, um, he doesn't put in his best material, he doesn't do his best job, he actually didn't put his heart and soul into it. It's actually a very sad way to end a very dedicated career. Well, anyhow, Joe goes back to his boss's office and tells his boss, hey boss, I finished that house that you wanted me to build. And his boss says, thank you so much, Joe, let's go inspect the house, because you know when you build a house, you gotta go and inspect it, right? So they go and inspect the house, and after his boss inspects the house, and Joe's worked there for 40 years, he said, Joe, thank you so much for building this house. And his boss goes in his back pocket, and he pulls out a key, and he says, Joe, this is my gift from me to you. Shocked. If he had only known he was building his own house, he would have done it so differently. How many of us have been Carpenter Joe? I know I have been sometimes. Let me ask you a question. Are you building your house properly? Are you putting down the floors? Are you putting up the walls? Are you putting the lights up in the air? Because we must understand that every decision we make, we got to make sure we build our house wisely. I'm going to pass this on to you. 
what I call the five P's. Now, one of the things about success, and I talked about it earlier, is what are the five P's, right? Well, the five P's are this. The first thing we got to do is be positive. How do you be positive? Well, one of the things, if you're like, Brian, I can't be positive. Well, I'll tell you what, change your surroundings. If you start hanging around with motivated people, you're going to change your environment and better things are going to happen, right? Another one is we got to practice. You see, when you're doing something and you want to become better at it, it's got to become a ritual. See, people who are in great shape, it's because it's a ritual, right? Some must have good rituals and some must have bad rituals. People who are very successful, okay, when it comes to, let's say, finances, it's because of a ritual. They have a routine that they follow by, right? And then the third thing we got to do is we got to be patient. A lot of us want to get it right now. Okay, I get that. I want it right now too. But at the same time, we have to have patience and grace through the process. And then number four is we got to persevere. How many times you get knocked down is not how many times you get knocked down. It's about how many times you get back up. If you know the formula for success is, success is getting up one more time than with falling down. I think of Thomas Edison. And here's a man that for 10,000 times he had failed before making the light bulb. And they had interviewed him and they said, Thomas, you failed 10,000 times. How is this possible that you're going to create this thing that's going to illuminate the light, the light bulb? Because they really didn't know what it was. You got to think, they were using fire before that. Fire, as they were interviewing him. And you know what Thomas said? He goes, although I might have failed 10,000 times in your eyes, it was never failure. It was only feedback. Wow. Are you asking yourself, am I failing or am I getting feedback? Because I know that every time that I've quote unquote failed, it's really only feedback. You see, feedback is the breakfast of champions. The more I learn, the more I grow. And when we fall forward, if you notice that when you get back up, you're a little bit further. And when you fall forward again, when you get back up, you're going to be a little bit further. And then the last one after perseverance is passing on. You see, if we're positive, if we practice the things that we're supposed to do in order to become better, if we're patient with the process and we persevere, then why not pass it on? I'm only taking the success principles that I've learned and grown throughout my life, that I've learned from guys like Tony Robbins, Jim Rome, Deepak Chopra, Dr. Wayne Dyer, Zig Ziglar, Les Brown, the list goes on and on. Pass it on. I want to ask you a question. Are you ready to change your life? Are you ready to make things happen? Because I know you can make things happen inside. I'm reminded of a story of a, the eagle, and I have to share this with you. The story of the eagle is when there was a baby eagle, right? And when the baby eagle was born, the mom flew away to go get some food. And a gust of wind had come, and, and the baby eagle had fallen out of the mountain onto the ground. And when the eagle had landed, it, it had landed in a chicken head. Now, I don't know if you know about chickens, but chickens are very good on bringing people in. Like, you become a part of their callings, right? So this eagle uh, picked up the habits of the chicken, walked like a chicken, talked like a chicken, right? And what had happened was years had gone by, and here was this eagle that was amongst the chickens. And it had moments in its life when it wanted to fly away because it felt like there was more inside. And I want you to envision that you're the chicken or you might be the eagle. Okay? And there are moments in our lives when we want to fly away, but what happened was the chickens came around and said, hey, what are you trying to do? You trying to fly? He goes, you're just a chicken. And the eagle said, you know what, you're right, I am. And then one day, an eagle from up top in the sky had flown over and had saw this eagle amongst the chickens and said, whoa, what is this eagle doing with these chickens? And the eagle came back the next day to stalk them out. And when the eagle came by, the eagle jumped into the chicken hen. And all the chickens ran away, and so did the eagle. But the eagle, we'll call the chicken eagle, got intercepted. And he said, hey, what are you doing here with these chickens? You're an eagle. You're meant to fly. And this eagle chicken looked at the real eagle and said, hey, you know what? I felt like I had moments when I could fly. And this eagle said, well, why don't you spread your wings and fly? Because I know some of us want to spread our wings and fly. And you know what the eagle chicken did? The eagle chicken looked at the eagle and said, okay, if you just give me a little bit space, right, I'll fly away. And the eagle said, okay, spread your wings and fly. And you know what the, the eagle chicken did when the eagle gave it a little bit of space? The eagle chicken ran away into the chicken head. <laughs> and you know what all the chickens did when the eagle chicken ran in? They said, oh, oh you outsmarted that eagle. Let me ask you a question. Are you an eagle 
acting like a chicken? Now, I know some of us are meant to fly, and sometimes the people around us hold us down. Be that eagle you're meant to be, because at the end of the day, success is right there at your feet.